Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about the IPVO Visualizer software and its settings. Well, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is to launch your software. So, in the lower left-hand corner, click on your Start button and scroll down to the Eyes. Under the Eyes, you will find IPVO Visualizer software, and you can go ahead and launch that. Alternatively, you can click on that Start button and type the word IPVO. Then, you can launch the software by either clicking on it or by pressing Enter on the keyboard once it's highlighted. By the way, if you want to be able to add that icon to your taskbar, all you have to do is click on the Start menu, scroll down to those eyes once again, and you can right-click on that IPVO Visualizer software, and you can go down to More, and you could pin it to your taskbar. Your IPVO Visualizer software will now be pinned to your taskbar, so you can launch it very quickly and easily when you need it. When you launch your software, make sure that you also turn on your camera. If the image doesn't come up, you can click on this little icon right here, which is your camera select button, and make sure that you find the VZR camera. Now that that's selected, let's talk about these icons in the upper left-hand corner. The settings cog is going to be the button that we're focusing on for this video. However, I will be talking about these other four icons so you're aware of what they are. The button to the right of the settings cog is the open new window button. And that might be an important button to click if you wanted to be able to have two instances of the software running, perhaps one running your webcam and one that's showing your document camera. The third button over is the camera status button. Clicking that button will show the status of your document camera or whatever camera it is you're using with IPVO Visualizer software. The fourth button over is the share live stream button, which we won't be using, so we're not really going to focus on it. The fifth button over is the mode button. As you can see, when I hover over the mode button, it says switch to larger UI or user interface. If I click that button, the IPVO Visualizer software will restart with much larger button icons, and that's to help the visually impaired. Clicking on the Mode button one more time will reset it to the normal user interface. Well, let's go ahead and get into that Settings cog. I'll click on the Settings cog, and you'll notice that when the Settings panel comes up, it comes up with the General tab, the Snapshot, Recording, Slow Motion, Time Lapse, and About tabs. We're going to talk in general about each of these tabs and some of the features on each of the tabs. Under the General tab is the Camera Sounds On section. If the Focus button is checked, you'll hear a beep every time the camera is in focus or the camera refocuses. If the Snapshot checkbox is checked, then every time you take a picture with your visualizer software, you'll hear a shutter sound. Under the section labeled File Saving Location, you have a choice of always being asked or selecting a predefined location. Every time you save or record a video or select a snapshot or record a time lapse, if the radio button for Always Ask is selected, then you're going to be prompted where you want to save that file. If, however, you've chosen the radio button for the predefined location, you can browse to a location and save that image in that predefined location each time without having to select it. In my case, you can see I have all images and saved videos going to my G Drive, which is my Google file stream, under an images folder, and 
under the IPVO folder within that Images folder. You can select a file name format. Under the file name format section, you can select the default radio button. And if you do, your file name will be in the format of the year, dash, month, dash, day, dash, time in military time that the image or video was recorded. You can select the second radio button, which will give the year, month, day, and a five-digit number. Or you can select the third radio button down, which will give you the option to provide a custom name to the file and append each new file with an incremental five-digit number. Or you can select Always Ask. I prefer to have the software always ask me what to name each individual file so I can provide a meaningful name for both myself and my students. The default language is English. And then since we're not going to really be doing any live streaming, we won't really go through those settings. Under the Snapshot tab, I have the Snapshot Timer off. A Snapshot Timer will give you a 3 or a 10 second countdown before the camera actually takes the picture. And if you want a high resolution image, you should check that checkbox there. Of course, doing so means that each snapshot will have a larger file size. If you look under the Recording tab, it's just the default settings that I have set. The reason for that is because I don't use the IPVO Visualizer software to record video off my computer. I simply always use OBS Studio to do all of my desktop recordings. And the reason I do that is because it's a little more stable and more efficient. Under the Slow Motion tab, you can see that you can change the rate of the slow motion video from half speed all the way to one fifth speed and a quality of normal, good, or excellent. Under the Time Lapse tab, you can see that you can take a time lapse video with an interval of one second to actually every one hour and the quality of normal, good, or excellent. And the About tab just provides information about this install of the IPVO Visualizer software. Well, that's all there is to the settings for the IPVO Visualizer software. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you have a great day.